What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video here again today. We're going to be going over what Daniel RPK put out on Patreon today. Give us an update on Scream 7. Very small. It's not anything too big, but it is a small update that we can talk about. He said, I can confirm the recent rumors about Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega returning. They had no discussions about it. So basically doubling down on what he kind of started last weekend, which led the viewer non chiming in saying they themselves took it upon themselves to talk to as many reputable people they could and could not find anything to substantiate that Melissa or Jenna would be returning despite rumors floating around online. Now he goes on to say the sequel is still on track to start production this December, which Nev herself has already talked about. It was supposed to start in September. Patrick Dempsey is still in talks to come back. The movie will have Sid and Gail as the stars again with a new group of teens as the other leads I'll screen for. Now that last part isn't something that's overly new because we had been hearing about something about a young male and two young women in their 20s that they were being eyed to star in the film, or at least that's the age bracket they were going for. So them being new teens, not shocking there. What I did think was the most meaty part of this, because it kind of corroborates what I had been saying, is that Sid and Gail are the stars again. What I had been hearing as to why Patrick is still in talks is because like I've been mentioning, he wants to have a bigger role. He does not want to be stay at home dad. He's interested in just being more involved the way it seems that Sydney and Gail are involved. I've heard there's some sort of team up that will happen again between Sid and Gail. Not that they haven't done that in the past, but just to throw that out there, I have been hearing about stuff like that. But I haven't been talking about it all that much because it's just a generalization, really nothing to really sink your teeth into there. So when it comes to Gail as a star again, I know a lot of people would love for this to end up being true if you feel that Gail was a lackluster addition, at least how she was conveyed in five and six. So seeing her as the star again could be satisfying to anyone who wants to see more of the Gale we got in Scream 4. Hell, even Scream 2, which is definitely her best outing. Courtney Cox's best performance as Gale is in Scream 2. Maybe you can see something like that. What would Gale's story be, though? Gale, at this point, maybe, hopefully, has written that book about Dewey. If she hasn't, perhaps we can toy with that. And maybe she's facing some sort of backlash from certain individuals and it's just like a mob mentality type of backlash because of her coverage over the years of Ghostface and it's on a whole nother level she's used to the backlash but it's everywhere she turns she can't even go online without being attacked by someone she goes on to all these social media platforms and she's being dogged about the recent book she did and even also because of the fact that maybe people think that because of her book that's what led to the carpenters being attacked again and maybe she just has people who don't like her morning show all of this is coming back on her and we can see her have this internal struggle throughout the film where she's juggling morals versus the chick and the story that we know she prides herself on basically everything that characters like sydney sam and dewey have pointed out to her about how she seems to be a very good person but she has an act for putting others feelings aside in the sake of propping herself up seeing that on a grand scale by multiple people all at once and seeing how she deals with that that could be a simple story to explore with gail in scream 7 while also giving us an update on if she's written that book about dewey or not but sitting gail being the focus is and carrying the story again that's not really all that shocking considering what we have been hearing about the story being all about sydney Gail obviously coming into the mix is going to be rooted in a scenario I can see playing out in which your opening sequence is just to theorize real quick. Let's do an opening sequence that is so non-traditional, meaning what if it's an opening sequence that has no phone call and it starts off the same way the 96 film started, where you have the title card immediately and not post kill the way the sequels are. So you immediately get the title card that reads Scream 7 with the scary music chiming in to get under your skin and make you uneasy, get you on the edge. And then we can pan into a location during the day where we see that Sydney and Mark are renewing their wedding vows. So to the viewer, and for anyone, of course, who's not been dissecting everything Scream 7 from start to finish leading up to its release, you'll be thrown off by this because you're going to be thinking, oh, this is a pretty happy-go-lucky start. And then during the wedding vows renewal, that's when someone can get attacked. That's when something can go awry. That's when all the shenanigans go 
go into effect. And this is what, of course, would prompt a character like Gail Weathers to get involved. Or maybe she's already there because, of course, Sydney invited her to be a part of this ceremony to see her and Mark renew their vows. And maybe after a few moments of us seeing Mark with the kids, with Sydney, then I'd feel a little bit more comfortable if you decided to kill him off in the opening versus him getting a phone call. I haven't really seen this relationship on screen, so I can't really sink my teeth into it. And then when he dies, I don't really give a damn. Because as a character, Sydney's husband is pretty paper thin as opposed to her. She's well-rounded and Mark is just this thin person we met 20 something years ago and now he's back. We need to spend time with him a little bit. Let us see these dynamics before you kill him. And I think a non-traditional opening sequence like that, that pretty much lures you into thinking they're actually about to renew their vows but in the back of your mind you know something's about to go wrong and then seeing chaos unfold and then mark being killed if he's the opening kill i would prefer that if mark is going to be our opening kill something that at least gets to highlight the dynamic of that relationship that marriage at least see him interacting with the kids versus seeing him alone sydney and the kids are gone and then he's just the opening attack with Ghostface calling him and you know the whole rigmarole of what we know to be the formula for these openings i'd rather see something non-traditional you don't even need a phone call just give us an opening scene with them renewing their wedding vows and then let the mayhem unfold gail will already be there decides to stick around in town because of what's happening her producers call her up tell her to stay there get the story easy way to keep gail around and if you want to take it a step further you could have the wedding vows renewal opening sequence play out the relationship dynamics between sydney mark and the kids can be showcased so i can be heartbroken when mark inevitably dies during his struggle with Ghostface. Cindy can discover the body and we jump a year later. Mark's murder still hasn't been solved, but Sid is convinced someone is after her. And because of this, she has shut herself off from love. She's become too strict on her kids due to this fear. And this op and this is opening up old wounds since it mirrors what happened to her mom. This at least would put Sydney in a position we can see her hopefully develop out of by the end of the film where she becomes where she puts her walls back down. They're not they're not as up and she's not as guarded and she's opening herself up to the chances of new love and stuff like that. And you could also connect the teens by showcasing that she's also been slacking at her job as a counselor at the local high school or something to that effect to get the teens involved. But you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.